Today we're going to be bringing you an incredibly appropriate Halloween video, and that would be how bull pythons hunt and consume their prey, and the anatomy or the tools that they use to do so. Fair warning, we will be showing how they feed. We will not be using a live rodent, because we can sufficiently do this with a frozen thawed. And as we have in the past two years, we'll be having a little bit of fun and bringing you the Halloween spirit as we do so. has closed its investigation into the string of missing persons cases in the Valparaiso area after the sudden reappearance of all the victims. While many are relieved, some are skeptical as none of the victims remember what happened. Not even Ryan Stuhlmacher, the first victim who reappeared exactly one year after his disappearance on Halloween night. Furthermore, Ryan saved his brother John from a violent attack the same night of his reappearance. Some theorize that John could have been the next victim if not for Ryan and are calling for the investigation to be reopened. The FBI has provided no comment at this time. From your Indiana News Network, I'm Xavier, signing off. You ready to start recording? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. So how do ball pythons hunt? Obviously, we're going to need to sprinkle in a little bit of anatomy here as we go. But first, let's just watch. Did you catch that? How quickly the animal reacts, how quickly it grabs and wraps. And once it has honed in on its prey, how deliberate its motions are. Let's take a look a little bit slower now. So here's the first anatomy we're going to talk about. The tongue, probably one of the most common things known with snakes, their forked tongue, but it serves a very, very important purpose. The tongue effectively tastes the air. When the tongue goes out and then retracts back in, it ever so subtly touches the top of the roof of the mouth of the snake. This allows it to detect chemicals and smells in the air and delivers this to the Jacobson organ, which then processes that smell and sends it to the brain, which allows it to determine what it is perceiving. It's interested when it does a tongue flick, but that doesn't mean it's gonna eat. Once you start seeing other behavior, like it's very abrupt head movements as it tracks the prey here, and you can see when I move it from side to side here, it very quickly and deliberately snaps its head back and forth before finally grabbing and very expertly dragging the prey back into itself and coiling it. This happens so quickly that obviously it incapacitates the prey. It makes it so that they're unable to move and unable to resist, and then very quickly they move into constrict the animal, which we will get into in just a bit. When we did this, we made sure it was nice and warm. This is incredibly important. Obviously, beyond the point of making sure that it doesn't eat ice crystals and such, it's incredibly important in that this animal now knows and can sense this with heat. I often have to dip them in warm water right before I serve them off when I do frozen thawed feedings. They will not recognize it as food if the prey does not have a sufficient level of heat to it, but it will be very interested in it, I've noticed. They often tongue flick, they look at it before deciding to turn about face and leave. The heat pits seen as these little dots right above the mouth are not nostrils. They are effectively like the predator from the movies. These heat pits allow them to detect infrared radiation emanating off of a warm object. This effectively allows them to hunt in the dark. It's why they don't need to have the greatest eyesight. It's why when a bull python is born without eyes, they're able to live perfectly fine, healthy lives because they're able to use their most important senses which honestly dwarf their eyes in terms of how they hunt. They also do have eyes of course. They perceive just like wires do just differently and they do have a nose which does work in conjunction with their Jacobson's organ that we spoke about but once they have probably smelt something that they're interested in they're going to start tongue flicking because that is a far more effective way for them to hone in on their prey or whatever they might be interested in. Lock all of your doors and windows now and don't open it for anyone, even if it is a human being. If you hear someone in your house or in your yard that sounds like a human, assume it isn't. If you see a clone on yourself or somebody else you know, run and hide. Make sure to hide your children and be prepared for the worst.
So all of these are great tools for tracking prey, which is a very important part of hunting prey. But how do they catch it? How do they kill it? Well, the first thing that they use are their teeth, and it's not to actually kill it. If they only had their teeth, these would be a very extinct animal. Looking here, you can see Pacer move in and grab the animal and pull it inwards. And bull pythons use their teeth, which they have a lot of, to achieve this. They're very small and very needle-like. There's nothing about them that's designed for tearing. These teeth are hypodermic like needles that are curved inwards and the teeth being curved inward is incredibly important for something that we'll talk about later. But the teeth's purpose is here in the actual catching process is to grab and then bring the prey in so that it can then use its muscles to constrict the prey. And I say constrict not suffocate. What it would be doing on a live rodent right now would be effectively inducing cardiac arrest. It's all about the ambush with these animals. They're very slow, unassuming, until it comes time for the kill. Once it comes time for the kill, their ambush is fast, quick, and lethal. Much like my favorite horror film character, Michael Myers. They use their incredible muscle strength to hold on to the prey and adjust even if they feel the animal moving. You can see that in this other video of gold dust eating. As you can see, as I pull it, gold dust here adjusts, basically thinking what I'm doing is not effective. I need to adjust. Once they are convinced that the prey is dead, they will then loosen their grip and begin the process of consumption. You're good. Yeah, I just, I just need to see. actually, can you pass me the water yeah. and then we'll, we can move on to the next segment since we're. You sure you're feeling all right? <sighs> yeah, honestly, um, honestly, no, I mean, it, it's, but it's, it's, it's everything that's happened this last year, you know, and, um. Jesus Christ! What's wrong? It, you didn't, no, nothing, it's. I'm just stressed out, man. It's just all you know, we do the Tinley videos. We have this Halloween video. We have two shows. Just, Are you sure you're all right? All the auction videos. Yeah, yeah. I just want to get this done. We got to get it done. Let's just go. Let's continue. I'm sorry. So the animal now has used its senses to track. It has used its weapons to subdue its prey. But how does the snake eat it? The prey is like two or three times larger than its head. How is it going to get it down into its stomach? Well, once it's convinced that it is subdued, it releases its hold. Their mannerisms are very interesting during this because it's effectively looking around and trying to find the perfect way that it can begin consuming it. Think about it this way. They don't have hands. They don't have arms. So they're going to need to position it in a way that they're able to take it down. This girl here drags this rodent all over the place before she finally finds a position that she's comfortable in taking it down. But again, look at the size of its head versus the thickest part of its body. How on earth does this animal consume this rodent? Well, typically you want to feed a rodent about the thickest part of your snake's body, maybe a tad bit thicker. This rodent is perfectly fine for this girl, even though at first glance it might look like it is a huge meal. Finally, she gets comfortable and she begins to eat her prey straight nose on mouth on into her This is incredibly important because it starts off small this way and very quickly gets the arms Which are the biggest obstacle to eating into her mouth and you can see here the jaw working its magic Look how each part of the jaw just moves up little by little and just crawls forward like a tank tread Using the teeth to help drag its prey back the teeth as we mentioned earlier are curved inward and the skull of the snake is a incredible Incredibly important and vital key component to all of this. Snakes do not dislocate their jaws. That is a myth. Snakes have a kinetic jaw. If you look right on the bottom of the snake's mouth, there is a line here. Your snake is able to open its jaw like this as well. It is also able to move independently certain parts of its mouth. You can see this perfectly right here, how it's able to move it in such a way that's almost fluid-like. This effectively creates a range of almost like a box that it's able to open and then just with its teeth just grab and you'll also notice how they kind of pull back and then push forward sometimes even pushing their prey down so that they're able to get more leverage you can see here it just pushes forward and then it brings it back so that it can then again push forward right here coils back up so that it can then use its body and its amazingly strong muscles to push forward and you're going to notice something here it's got a decent amount of this rodent already down but still not the biggest part not the fat 
that butt of this animal. But once it gets past the arms, it's all over. This goes down so quick, even though that's the thickest part of the animal. At this point, the snake's body itself, its incredible muscles, are doing most of the work internally. It just continues this motion of its muscles moving forward and pulling back. At this point, the teeth probably aren't even necessary. It has most of its traction internally able to pull this rodent back in. And you can see now it passed the arms. This is going down very, very, very quickly. And you see her jaw stretched out to about her maximum at this point as she continues to pull it in. Since she has the space, once it gets down past the final legs, you'll notice she goes up using gravity to help her take it down the rest of the way. They can do this without that. They can continue using their muscles, but if they can use the gravity to push the snake back, they will. And here she goes with just the tail left now. That little head took in all that rodent. After they eat, they effectively just want to find a spot to relax on a hot spot so that they can digest their meal. They're not going to want to be messed with or touched or held because this causes them more stress. You saw the size of the meal that they ate. After Thanksgiving dinner, do you want to be held or anything like that? No, you just want to sit down. Well, this thing had all of the Thanksgiving dinner. It ate all the turkey all by itself. It certainly just needs to be left alone at this point, but it is insanely awesome how these animals hunt, subdue, and consume their prey. If you liked this Halloween special, you can actually check out our previous two right here and here. Is that, that good? Uh, yeah, that's great. Awesome, awesome. I'm beat, man. I'm, I'm tired here. I'm ready to go to bed. You feeling better now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, good. I'm alright. Good. So, yeah. Glad all this stuff is finally over. Yeah, yeah. Everything will go back to normal.